What happened to the Jaffa Clock Tower? Believe it or not, there was once a clock tower that stood upon the iconic Jaffa Gate. It stood from 1907 until 1922. The clock was built in honor of the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid to commemorate the 25th year anniversary of his ascension to the throne. The clock was one of hundreds built in the empire and one of seven in the area that would be ruled by the state of Israel. The inhabitants of Jerusalem did not have the funds to build the tower on time for the 25th anniversary celebration. It took the Jerusalemites six full years to raise the money and quarry the stone which came from Zedekiah's cave to begin to construct the project. The cornerstone was laid in April 1907 and completed in August of that same year. The clock tower was dedicated in September to coincide with the anniversary of the Sultan's coronation. The tower stood 13 meters over the top of the gate and was topped by four clock faces oriented to the cardinal compass points. The eastern and western faces showed official time, which was your European, while the northern and southern faces showed the local time. Above the clock faces was a bell and the crescent and star symbol of Ottoman rule. It became the centerpiece for the nascent town center that was developing at the Jaffa Gate. In today's society, it is hard to really see the need for such a tower as most everyone owns a phone. However, until the middle of the 20th century, most people did not even own watches. This made the clock tower a very important landmark in the city. Aside from the oldest known clock tower in ancient Athens, which displayed eight sundials, most early clock towers did not have watch faces and would make use of striking clocks to sound the hour. In order to enable as many people as possible to hear the time, the clocks were elevated on a tower in the center of the town or city. The Jerusalem Tower caused controversy especially from the non-Muslim population. Irish archaeologist Robert McAllister, who headed excavations for the Palestine Exploration Fund, complained, The gate has been utterly spoiled by the erection above of an ultra-hideous clock tower, which was a perfect eyesore. In 1919, the father of Israeli art and the founder of the Bezalel School of Art Boris Schatz wrote an article calling for the dismantling of the ugly clock in his plan to beautify the city. Ironically, his Batsalel Art Pavilion was torn down in 1918 by the British military governor, Sir Ronald Storrs, for not conforming to the character of the city. Storrs led the Pro-Jerusalem Society, in which he worked with his civic advisor, Charles R. Ashby, in designing a master plan for the city. This plan, which would later become known as the Gad's Ashby Plan, stipulated that the old city would be an ascetic and spiritual center intended for preservation, but without functional purpose. It stated that any future development of the city would continue towards the west. This plan would indeed serve as a basis for the city's master plan during the British Mandate, which started in 1922 and beyond. Its effect is still felt today in the city of Jerusalem. The Gad's Ashby plan called for the old city to be enveloped by parklands. Structures that were in these areas were to be torn down. The Jerusalem clock tower was among the very first structures to be destroyed when the plan went into effect in 1922. The original plan was to dismantle the clock and sell the stones, but after protests from the Muslim population of the city, it was decided to move it somewhere else. They were upset because a clock was made using public funds. It was suggested to move the structure to Jerusalem's train station if the railroad would contribute to the clock's relocation. Ultimately, in 1923, the society decided to completely dismantle the old tower and build a new one in Allenby Square, what is today known as Kikar Tzahav. A lot was eventually purchased by the Jerusalem municipality, and plans for a new clock tower were drawn up by the British architect Clifford Holliday. The construction expenses were covered by the pro-Jerusalem society who donated the building as a gift to the Jerusalem municipality. The clock tower building was designed to conform to a more modern style, read acceptable to the British ascetic. The building also included a small shopping center on street level and was completed in 1925. The construction however was short-lived. Different reasons were given for its demolition, the most popular being that once Jerusalem's new city hall building was opened, traffic would increase and the roads would subsequently need to be widened. Another reason given at the time was that the management of the newly opened Barclays Bank pressured the city to dismantle the tower because it hid the facade of the bank. 
Whatever the reason, it was decided during the construction of the new city hall to demolish the clock. Shops were shuttered and tenants were kicked out. After delay in implementing the demolition, the tenants moved back in in early 1933. On September 28, 1934, just two months after the completion of the municipal building, demolition began on the shops. A year later, the tower was also dismantled. And with that, ended Jerusalem's infatuation with clock towers. Just five short years later, World War II would break out, and the wristwatch would render the clock tower obsolete. Thanks for watching.